Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this letterhead in Word and save it as a template and as a PDF file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct and create all the graphics and the text, and then I'm going to copy and paste it all into the headers and footers. And now the reason I do that is because if you just do all the graphics and then just save it, then when you want your letter to run over to a second page, you have to repeat all those graphics again. Whereas if you put everything in the headers and footers, it will repeat it for you. So let's just go ahead and go up to insert, go to shapes, go to circle and just draw out an oval. Now with this oval, we want to customize it first and then we can simply copy and paste it. So select your shape, go to shape format and go all the way over to format pane. And in this format pane, we've got fill and line. Fill is the color in the middle of your shape and line is the borderline. So we don't want a line, so I'm going to select no line. And I'm also going to select a gradient fill because I want to select a gradient for my oval. Now here in this section is how you control and customize your gradients. I'm just gonna move this in a little bit. So all you need to do is be aware of this selection box down here with your two markers. Now you can add and decrease the amount of markers you want by adding them, press this add button, and you can add one and you can minus them by selecting it and hitting the minus button here. Now you select one of your markers, you go down to color, and then you just select a color of your choice, let's just select red, and you can see what happens. When I use this slider, you can see how that red increases and decreases as I use my slider. So you can go ahead and select a color of your choice, Let's select the darker green, there we go. Or was it the darker blue, that one? I think it was that one. And again, you can fully customize how these colors will lie within your shape. You can also change the direction. You can select from a number of different presets here. You can select the direction. You can have a radial gradient if you want to, where it'll come from the middle, and then you can select the direction. So let's select the middle one, and you can see how your gradient changes. So let's leave it on the radial. And then all we need to do now, now before I copy and paste this, I'm just going to put a shadow onto it and then it's fully customized. So select the shape, go back over to sh uh, format shape, click on this effects icon here, go down to shadow, go to presets and select a shadow of your choice. I'm going to select this one. And then you can customize that shadow by using these sliders. You can affect the size of your shadow. You can select the blur. The angle of it so it'll move that shadow wherever you want it. Let's just leave it where it was and also the distance away from your shape as well. So once you're happy with your shadow you can go ahead and copy and paste this shape. You can do that in the normal way or go to command or control C on your keyboard, click away, command or control V or select your shape, hold down your alt key, click and drag and that will also copy your shape. So we only need two of these. And now we can go ahead and we can just move these shapes around until they fit our style. Now, if you want to move one underneath the other, select it, go to shape format, go to send backwards, center back. And again, use this little rotation arrow here to move this up and down. Now, once you're happy, I'm going to group these two together, select one, hold down your command or control key, select the other one, go to shape format, group, and select group. And now this is one element. And then once again, I'm going to copy and paste it. And then I'm also going to click away from it, deselect it, because it's selected both of them and I only want to rotate this one. And then you can go ahead and pop this one down at the bottom. So those shadows have changed, so I'm going to... Ah, oh, no, it follows. So I'm gonna pop mine down at the bottom here. And again, you can customize this. You can put as much or as little as that shape at the bottom. And generally you can put your social media sites down here so you can customize as much as you need uh, for that space there. 
Once I've done that, I'm going to insert my logo. So insert, pictures, picture from file, select my logo, insert. Now you can see my logo is there, but it's actually at the back of these two ovals. So whilst it's selected, picture format, wrap text in front of text, and then I can just line that up where I want it here. I find the blacks a bit too stark, so I'm going to select it, go to picture format, transparency, click on the drop down. I'm just going to turn down that transparency a little bit so it blends in a little more with the background. Just increase the size of that a little bit. So once I'm happy, I'm going to select my logo, hold my command or control key down, select the shapes, picture format, group, and select group. Now, if I was to begin typing now, you can see where my cursor is at the top here. So if I was to start typing, you can see all my letters go behind my design. So what I need to do, if I just want to type, I use text boxes to construct my letters, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you want this to start here, then go over to your margins over here. If you can't see the rulers, go to view, make sure rulers are ticked. Take your cursor over, and when it turns into a double-headed arrow, click and then pull that down. Just move that back up again. Move this one back up. And now you can see where your cursor is. Now if you need to move it down a bit more, that's fine, but usually you'll want to put your dress over the side here. So that's the way you can add the cursor to the right spot. And then of course you can use your tab keys to type your address over to the side here. Now at the moment, if I wanted to go to another page, so insert, break, you can see that my design will not be copied over to the subsequent page or the page before. So we need to add this to our headers and our footers. So in order to do that, I'm going to move this one down, move this one up. I know this is really strange, bear with me. So I'm going to copy them both by selecting them both, holding down the command or control key. And then I'm going to copy them, go to home and then copy. I'm going to double click at the top of my document. So I go into the headers and footers and you can see I'm now in headers and footers. And now I'm just going to go over to home and click paste. And you can see now that these two designs are in my headers and footers. Now, in order to deselect these, you've got to click inside the headers or footers. If you click in the middle section here, nothing will happen. So click in those headers and footers. I'm going to move this one up. I'm going to move this one down. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't have to be within this blue line. As long as you're in the headers and footers section, it will still apply. And then once you're happy, double click in the main area of your page. This means you're back into your document. Delete these two. And although this is slightly grayed out, when you send this as a PDF, then this will look absolutely perfect. If you want to send it as a Word document, you may have to use the technique we used before because it will be grayed out. But of course, if you're printing it as well, it will be absolutely perfect. So now let's just press the return key as if we're going on to another page and as you can see when we go on to the next page it's copied over because it's in the headers and footers. Now to keep my letters nice and simple and I usually save them in templates what I do is construct all of my letters in text boxes so go to insert text box draw text box click and draw out a text box then I can go ahead and insert my address I'll just paste this in there we go And then if I click away from here, you can see I've got a black border there, which I don't want. So select it, go to shape format, go to this icon here, which is shape outline. Click on the drop down and select no outline. And then for the main body, again, insert text box, draw text box, click and drag out a text box. Insert your text. Again, I'm going to copy something in, saves you watching me type. Again, click away, you've got that black border. So again, shape format, outline, no outline. 
And what this does enable you to do is to move this anywhere you want to. Now, if you want to move it down a bit, you can see the white border or the white background here. Again, we can get rid of that, select it, shape format, shape fill, click on the drop down, no fill, and you can see it takes that white background out. But what you can do is you can fully adjust this box so that it suits the look you want. And again, you can move this around so that it fits your design. And I just find that rather than manipulating all the margins, it's just easier to click on it and just move it around. It also means that sometimes you want your letter to look a little bit longer than it is. You can just decrease the width of it, place it in the center, and it just takes up more of that page. And it just looks nicer. You can ensure it's in the center of the page by selecting it, going to shape format, going to align, align to center, and it's perfectly centered in your page. If you now want to save this as a template, go up to File, Save as Template. Make sure you save it as a Microsoft Word template. Name it what you want. Click Save. And then if we just, and then when you go to open your next document, if you go along to More Templates here, and then you can see I've got Personal at the top here. And then over here, you can see letterhead 10, which we made just now. Click on it, click create, and there you have your template. And it's called document eight. And this basically means that now when you go ahead and customize it or change the text, you will have to save it as a new document. And it means your template will always be there for you in exactly this format. If you want to save it as a PDF, go to file, save as. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Go down to the file format, click PDF, name it what you want, and then click export, and then open up your PDF. And as you can see, my letter is perfect, and all the colors are very vibrant within my PDF file, if you want to send that via email. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.